So this is amazing. We have the story of our universe encapsulated in a single differential equation, a single equation, the Friedman equation, that allows us to figure out what is going to happen in the future depending on the state of the universe now. And it all seems to depend on this density. Uh, omega, we call it the ratio of the density of the universe to the critical density, which also uh, tells us the value of k, which is a curvature of space. If the omega is greater than the critical density, omega is greater than 1, then that's telling us the universe will eventually stop expanding and start shrinking back down again and come together again with galaxies raining down in some enormous uh, big crunch or ganab gib. It's a pretty horrible way to end. Yeah, it wouldn't be good to be in the universe when everything's coming together at the end because it would be a pretty fiery ending very at the very end. The other part about that universe that is finite in time is it's finite in space. There's a finite amount of real estate. And while the universe seems very big now, uh, in the future, if it were, for example, coming together in that Ganab Gib, it wouldn't be much of it left at the very end. And so it has that interesting characteristic of telling us the, you know, how much real estate there is out there in the universe. Yes, yeah, so we have a universe that's finite in space and time. It has a definite beginning, a definite end, and there's only so much of it. You don't hit a brick wall that says the end, but you just, if you go far enough in one direction, come back to where you started from. And in principle, you could tell you're in this universe because if you measure pi on really large scales, you will find it's less than it's canonically supposed to be, and parallel lines would converge which in principle you could measure in some way. I suppose you could you count, maybe not measure the circumference of a circle, but measure the volume by counting how many things are within a given radius and seeing how that changes. So in the little Python program, people can play around and see what the trajectory of the universe is. They can also play around with whether or not the universe is made up of photons or made up of normal matter. And so that, uh, you, you might think that would change how the universe uh, moves forward, and it, clearly it does. But the general scenario is the same. If you're a universe that only has photons in it, then you slow down, you just slow down faster, and then you collapse faster uh, if you're made of photons than if, for example, you're made out of normal matter. Yes, yeah, so it makes a little difference apart from speeding things up. I personally like the universe with omega equals one or even less better. I mean, I don't know what you feel about that. I always take a straw poll in my class and ask which ones people prefer, and uh, it usually splits the class half and half. If you have a, uh, omega uh, less than one or equal to one, then the universe will keep on expanding forever. It's infinite in both space and time. I'm a man who definitely prefers a universe that ends and has a beginning. It seems symmetric and, you know, I don't have to ponder infinity then. As I like pondering infinity, I like a universe that goes on forever. Unfortunately, as we'll deal with later in the course, while the universe may go on forever, we won't. The universe will eventually die of um, a heat death, of exhaustion, of uh, free energy, of entropy. So it's the dying of the universe with a bang or a whimper, but we're going to die one way or the other. Yeah, that's true. So which of these models is true? Can we actually observe whether the universe is going to come back together again or keep expanding forever? Or even something stranger, of course. Well, that's a very interesting question. It's one that I've spent a good portion of my career trying to understand. And so in order to do that, we're going to have to go out and literally look at the universe, observe what the universe is doing, and try to measure what it's doing, rather than impose our own prejudiced beliefs onto the universe. I don't think it really cares. So we're going to talk about that a bit later in this course. We're actually going to talk about the measurements and how uh, they found come up with a very surprising answer. But first... This whole thing is dependent upon our assumption the universe is totally the same everywhere and uniform. And that itself is actually a very weird one. So next time we're going to talk about the theory of inflation, which explains why this um, uniformity is actually there in the first place.